Good evening, and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Mark, assisted by Deacon John. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Jesus is the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Let us ponder this as we gather together today to encounter the Lord in word and sacrament. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 149, Behold the Lamb of God, number 149. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, who carries a burden, who knows a pain, who bears the sins of the world. Behold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who knows his sheep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you lead us into verdant pastures. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life abundantly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me, in the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep. But you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks. be to God.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters it, but whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, St. Paul. And good evening to those who are watching at YouTube today. We're glad that you're with us. So, got a question for you. Is Jesus the lamb, the shepherd, or the gate? Who, who, think, who thinks that he's the lamb? Raise your hand if you think. I'll just take a poll here. Who thinks he's the lamb? Who thinks he's the shepherd? Who thinks he's the gate? Who thinks he's all three? You're right if you raise your hand on that last one. He's all three. He's all three, actually. It's easy to get confused with Scriptures because they're constantly throwing out metaphors uh, at us as to who Jesus is. But each of these metaphors, the lamb and, and the shepherd and the gate, they, they all have uh, their own unique uh, meaning. And, uh, and of course, I mean, we know he's the lamb of God. We say it at every mass, right? We always say the lamb of God takes away the sins of the world, <laughs> right? So the Lamb of God, when we, t we talk about Jesus as, as the Lamb, all right, uh, who else is often considered to be sheep? You and me, right? We're, we're, we're lambs. We're, we're God's sheep. We follow, uh, we follow Him. And, but if He's a lamb, He is making Himself out to be an example for us right? He's making himself out to… And sometimes we, we add a, an additional term to describe the lamb. Sometimes we call him the spotless lamb. You know, the, the, the spotless lamb because, of course, he's without sin. You know, we, we get all sorts of garbage going on in our lives, so we're definitely not the spotless lamb. But he's the spotless lamb. So when… Uh, when you know, and they, we always say he's the spotless lamb, lamb who was slain, who was who was killed for our sins. So 
when, when we refer to Jesus as the Lamb, not only are we referring to his, his sacrifice for us, but also his sinlessness and his humility. So he's creating, he's creating for us an example that we follow as followers. So he's, he's training us to be a good follower. The next uh, metaphor that, that Scripture throws at us a lot is the shepherd. We call, in fact, we call him the good shepherd. He's not a bad shepherd. He's a, he's a good shepherd. And so, but once again, Jesus is providing an example for something for you and me. Because who else can be a shepherd? You and me, right? We're not called only to be lambs. We are also called to be shepherds because shepherds are disciples. Shepherds are leaders. Shepherds are engaged in evangelization. All right? They're active in their faith. It's one thing to be a lamb and be a good follower. It's another thing to be a good leader. You have to be a follower first, but it's to become a good leader. And, and we're getting close to Pentecost here, so the Good Shepherd is a very good metaphor for all of us right now because once Pentecost hits, what does Jesus ask of us to go and do? He asks us to go and do ministry, to do as He did. So that's what we do. We become good shepherds. But there's one more, and this, this, is, this only comes up really in this reading, but it's, it's a really important metaphor as well. And it, it, it even states towards the end of that reading that Jesus is the gate. He's the gate. So we have a, if you can kind of picture it, a, a sheepfold, all right? It's a, a big, huge space where we gather all the sheep. And once they're in this space, they're safe, right? And there has to be a way to get in and out of that space. There's an opening. There's a gate. So, you know, what's, what's the old saying? Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and no one comes... Uh, to, uh, to, to God except through Him, right? Through Him. He is the gate. We go through Christ. And here's why this metaphor is important. Because while the first two metaphors are examples, He is being an example for us as the Lamb. He is being an example for us as the shepherd. As the gate, He's not being an example. He's being something you and I cannot be. You and I are not the way. We are not the gate. I don't go through any of you or you don't go through me to get eternal life. We only go through Jesus. He is the only gate. You know? But the shepherd's job is important because if, if you're a shepherd, you know where the gate is. <laughs> right? And this is, this is where it becomes important. You got all these lambs out there. I, I remember one time when I was uh, doing a Scripture reading, uh, and it was the, the gospel of the lost sheep. We all remember the lost sheep. And you know, Jesus goes out to find the one lost sheep. And I was actually talking with a bunch of uh, preschool and kindergarten age kids about the lost sheep. And, and I asked them, you know, why, why do you suppose there was a lost sheep? And, and one little boy says, because sheep wander. <laughs> they wander. They get lost. They go out. They go all over the place. All right? So sheep do this. We do this sometimes. Sometimes we wander. We, we get lost. Right? But See, if, if, you have, if you have stepped into the role of the shepherd, it means you're not lost anymore. It means 
you're, 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 pretty, you're on pretty solid ground in your own faith life. It means you have a pretty good idea where the gate is. Your job becomes to lead the sheep to the gate. Because you can't be the gate. I can't be the gate. Jesus is the gate, but we're all shepherds. We can all get people to the gate, you know? Uh, what, you know, uh, I, I still remember um, in seminary, one of my, one of my professors, uh, he, he used, to, used to say, uh, you know, what's, what's the best thing that you can do in ministry? And, and his answer was very simple. And it's something we can all relate to. To help people get to heaven. Right? That's, can you think of a better thing that you can possibly do in your life than to help somebody get to heaven? To get to the, to get to the sheepfold, to get to that gate. I, I can't think of a single thing more appealing in my heart than to know that I helped somebody. All right? You know people. They're, they're in your families. They're, they're, they're out there in your neighborhoods. They're wandering around, you know. Maybe some of them are, maybe some of them have just recently wandered, you know. Let's call them the COVID wanderers. <laughs> There's a whole group of COVID wanderers out there. All right? You know because there were more people in here at one time about three years ago. I've been talking to a, a deacon friend of mine and another parish up north. He had called me because they are having the same issue at their parish that we're all having, and that is trying to get people back after COVID. And some folks, you know, some folks are just uh, uh, being super careful, and that's okay. That's okay. But there's also just a group of people who just... Maybe they were unengaged to begin with. And this was just the one, what do they call that? The straw that breaks the camel's back? This was the straw. This, this was the thing that, that put them over the edge. If you know people like this, in your neighborhood, wherever it is, invite them back. Be the shepherd. Go out. Invite them in. We got Pentecost coming up, right? Pente When's Pentecost, John? How, how many weeks away are we now? I'm trying to do the math in my head. Pentecost. Are we three weeks? Three weeks? All right. That's, a, that's enough time to do this challenge. Pentecost. This is my Pentecost challenge. I used to do this at St. Alexander. And this, is, this gives you three weeks to prepare about it. On Pentecost Day, I want you to do three things. If you take up my challenge, I'm asking you to do three things. The first one is easy. Everyone should get the first one right. Everyone show up at St. Paul on Pentecost Day at Mass wearing red. Can you do that? Who can do that? Come on, we all have a red shirt, red dress, a red whatever. Wear red. I'll be wearing red. I have to. Pentecost, we wear red. So it's a sign of being an evangelist, being a disciple, okay? Wear red. That's number one. Number two. Now, now I'm going to kind of push you outside of your comfort zone a little bit on number two. Number two, I want you to reach out to one person. It can be anyone. It could be a family member, be your son or daughter. Could be, uh, you know, grandchild, niece or nephew. Could be your next door neighbor. It could be somebody that you've known for a long time. Reach out to one person, at least one person, 
and invite them to come to Sunday Mass with you. Can you do that? Come on. Come on, raise hands. YouTubers, have them come over to your house and watch it on YouTube with you. Come on. Work with me a little bit on this. I'll take anything. Ask somebody to come to church with you. Wear red. Ask someone to come to church with you. Number three is actually a little easier. Uh, it it kind of goes along with number two. But as an incentive for them to come to Mass with you, invite them also to have a meal with you after Mass. Whether it's at your home or out at a restaurant, whatever it is, invite them to a meal. All right, part of discipleship, part of helping people to find the gate is to also to find the other sheep. And, and because, you know, sheep genuinely like each other. They spend time with each other. <laughs> they, they, they have fellowship with each other. So invite your friend to Mass. Take him out to eat. And, and see what happens. See what happens. Uh, we, did this at, we did this at St. Alexander a couple of years in a row. And I, I was genuinely pleased by how many people wore red. There were a lot of, lot of red. And we did. And, and don't get disappointed if they say no. If they say no, you still did your part. You still did your part if they say no. And they might say no. It's a valid answer but at least you asked, all right? At least you as a shepherd went out there and you made the offer. You made the offer, all right? How do we get people back in the pews again? It's, it's got to be all hands on deck. It's got to be all of us together. That's, that's how we rebuild the church. That's how we... That's how we get those COVID wanderers back or maybe people who've wandered years and years ago way before that ever even happened. Um, every now and then, I'll, I'll, get a, I'll get a confession where someone says, it's been 30 years or it's been 40 years or it's been 50 years. So I know it's happening. It is happening. Uh, people do listen, but you got to ask. you got to ask. So do this with me. Pentecost, this is, this is when Jesus sort of passes the baton and says, now you're going to do ministry. You're going to go out. You're going to be disciples. You're going to be evangelists. You're going to be shepherds. Red shirt, can we do it? All right, can we ask a friend? Will you take them to breakfast or lunch afterwards or dinner? Awesome, awesome. Four weeks. For four years. weeks. You got four weeks. That's a long time. If you want, in fact, if, if you got to know, you even have enough time to like call somebody else and try again. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light, light from light, light true, true God, God from true God, God. Begotten, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, <clears throat> through him all things were made, for us, for us men and for our salvation. He came, he came down, down from heaven. From heaven. And by, by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate, was incarnate the, Virgin the Virgin Mary and became man. For our, For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death, death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has has spoken spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Holy Catholic Catholic and apostolic church. church. I I confess confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident of God's love, we ask boldly for our needs and those of all creation. That the church become more Christ-like each day through constant renewal in the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil leaders put public welfare above political gain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that they will receive what they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the words and actions of our community declare Jesus as Lord of heaven and earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they receive the healing power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Georgine Miller, that they may experience the fullness of God's love in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our parish prayer list, for the intentions written in our book of prayers, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, the deceased pastors of St. Paul the Apostle and the Diocese of Joliet and Michael Sterer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, in your love, you do marvelous things. Guide us toward Jesus, the good shepherd who desires an abundant life for his flock. Amen. Amen. Please help us sing the presentation song, number 475, Because the Lord is my shepherd, number 475. the Lord is my shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in the meadow and leads me to the quiet streams he restores my soul and he leads me in the paths that are right Lord you are my shepherd You are my friend, I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. And when the road leads to darkness, I shall walk there unafraid. Even when death is close, I have courage, for your help is there. You are close beside me with comfort, you are guiding my way, Lord. You are my shepherd, you are my friend, I want to follow you
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our bishop, Daniel, our retired bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With the Spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you, John. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
please help us sing the communion song number 461 shepherd me O god number 461 Shepherd me, O God, behind my wants, behind my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters. Of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, behind my wants, behind my fears, from death into life. Oh, I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into love. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And just a few announcements uh, today. Uh, today, of course, is our uh, welcome weekend, so there's snacks back in the narthex. Grab a little snack uh, uh, on your way out today. Um, there's coffee and treats. Um, also, if you are uh, new to the parish and you're looking to register, 
Uh, we always have registration available on Welcome Weekend, so that's, that's back there as well. Um, also, the, uh, so the next Welcome Weekend is, is May 27th and May 28th, uh, which is, happens to be Pentecost Weekend. <coughs> red, wear red, <laughs> invite one person, and also take them uh, out to a breakfast or a lunch. Um, religious education, they're going to be having their May crowning on Monday, May 1st, at 6.15 in the courtyard, uh, and all are invited. If you want to join RE for uh, 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 May crowning and some prayers uh, to Mary, uh, please join them on Monday. Um, uh, finally, you may have looked around the church and seen that uh, we have some uh, First Holy Communion uh, banners uh, on the wall today. Uh, our second graders will be making their First Communion on May 6th. So we just ask that you pray for them. Uh, this is a real special moment for them. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be yeah. to God. Let us end this time of worship and praise by singing number 625, Tend the Ground, number 625. We till the earth, we tend the ground, sowing hope and peace when none is found. In selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. As God provides our every need, with grateful hearts, let us receive. These gifts of love and make return To bless the world, to bless the world We tell the earth, we tend the ground So we hope when peace when none is found In selfless love, God's life abounds We tell the earth, we tend the ground Have a good day. Take care. Take care. We'll see ya. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Have some snacks. Take care. Have a good evening. Have a good evening.